the 109th day of class, the unification of Italy. Now, Italy was one of many revolutions that took place during this time, and the Italian Revolution was well known for three men who had the nickname the Soul, the Brain, and the Sword. And we'll talk about those three men in a minute. But I wanted to go a little deeper as a philosophical metaphor and ask you, who do you know, and looking at yourself, you know, which one of these three best resemble you, would be somebody who's a soul person, a big idea person, a motivator, a hype man, somebody who can get the people believing it's possible. Now, some people aren't wired that way. Some people don't have that bombast and that uh, big idea thinking, but they can actually solve the problem. They can take this idea and make it work in very tangible terms. And then the sword. People who can enforce the expectations, enforce the rules, enforce matters against people who want to take away. And the question in class, can you apply these three things to organizations? And certainly you can. And we came up with sports teams, and definitely the school had some brain people and some soul people and some uh, sword people. So this metaphor applies to many things. So it was a very interesting class discussion that we had about that. But moving on to Italy, and applying this to Italy, what was Italy like before the revolution? Now, before the revolution, the Italian peninsula was split up into small states. To this day, um, being Italian-American myself, if I were to meet another Italian-American, a lot of times they'll ask, what region of Italy uh, do your people come from? Not this overall Italian notion. So a non-Italian, here's my name, goes, are you Italian? Yes, I am. Um, a fellow Italian will say, uh, what are you, Calabrese, you know, your Abruzzes, you know, the Napoli, what, what, what have you. So to this day, it's still in the Italian thinking. And this divided Italy was the status of Italy ever since the Roman Empire fell. And that was a long time. That we're talking about 1,400 years at this point. But Italy had some advantages to becoming a revolutionary country where it could unify. It had common culture, common history, common ideas, common land, common language, and common religion in the form of uh, Roman Catholicism. So they had some things going for it. And if you look at these maps, this would be the Italian states uh, right at the brink of revolution. And, you know, if I look at my ancestors, they come right from the center of the country. And I had a couple of my students who said they were Sicilian. But you can see these divisions. Now, these divisions oftentimes are caused by geography. I'm going to show you a picture in a minute how geographically separated Italy is. And you can see after the revolution um, how much more unified it was. So when did it take place? Now, from 1820 to 1848, there were some uprisings, but they were crushed by Austria very quick. But this idea of revolution was in the air. Again, you could revolutions don't happen overnight, but there was this fervor, there was this idea, there was something in the air. And then by 1858, for 12 years, the unification was in full swing. And very similar to the other times of revolution, America, 1776, France, 1789, Haiti, 1789, Japan, 1868. We call this the age of revolutions for a reason. So why did the Italians revolt? Now, primarily, it was because of foreign invaders. And there's this notion, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And we had this notion of foreign people telling you what to do, invading your space, regardless of what region of Italy you were from. So you had this common enemy. You had the common enemy of uh, the French and the common enemy in the Austrians, and they wanted them out. Case in point, um, I was visiting uh, the hometown of where the Celsicholis come from, and you can see on the iconography here, it's a rooster. Now, the rooster is a symbol of the French, so it shows that the French did conquer this central part of Italy a long time ago, and it still remains. And this picture I'm showing here, these mountain ranges just went on as far as the eye could see. And just to get to this place called Galliano, um, curvy, difficult drive, up and down, um, very scary drive. So... Traveling throughout Italy, you can see how geographically different it is, and that would be a challenge in unifying the nation. So how did they do it? Well, first of all, you had to get this notion of nationalism, that eight-part formula that I beat you over the head with, uh, to getting this idea of, na of uh, foreign rule. And France leaves as a result of the Franco-Prussian War, 
And here it is, the soul, this idea, the young Italy, the secret nationalist group, and they wanted to get rid of foreign rule in all these different places, Sardinia and Naples and Sicily and Rome. But here's the soul, it's the idea, and people gathering and thinking, and you need these people for an organization. And that man was Mazzini, the soul, and he formed Young Italy, this nationalist movement, and he gave speeches, and he inspired people, and he touched people's hearts um, because of his personality and his passion. Now, Cavour, who's known as the brain, didn't have what Mazzini had. He was the prime minister of Sardinia, or Sardinia a politician, and he knew how to navigate through politics. A bright man, probably not an inspirational man, but the man who could navigate the nuts and bolts to becoming one Italy. And then the sword, uh, Garibaldi, the, uh, I've heard him called the George Washington of Italy. You know, what George Washington is to America, he is to Italy. And he was a soldier, and he got the people together in red shirts, and he helped unite the North and the South, and he aggressively fought for nationalism with getting weapons, and he fought bravely, and you could see his image all over Italy uh, when you traveled. And these three men to this day are um, put on a bit of a pedestal as our founding fathers are in the United States. You know, if I say Jefferson and Thomas Paine and Benjamin Franklin and, and so and George Washington, we put them on a certain elevated level. So in the Italian story, these three men are elevated as well. And it was a success. And Italy did unify and you can look at europe about 150 years ago or so this was the beginning of these um, disjointed kingdoms becoming the modern nations uh, that we are we associate with the 20th and 21st centuries and it was a process that was in motion and you could take each of these nations and within a hundred year window they became a modern nation as we know them now but then again, World War I certainly changed all that, but that's for another day. So thank you for watching.